Hello, uh, welcome to this slightly different uh, podcast. Um, this week, this week, this time rather, I'm joined by Lucy Blundell, who made the very interesting One Night Stand game that was released on Steam earlier this month or last month. Uh, we put a review of it up on the site, and I thought, what better way to explore the game more than to pick the brain of the developer herself? And here she is today. Hello, uh, thank you for having me. Oh, you're quite welcome. Uh, so first of all, uh, can you just tell me a bit about your background, kind of what brought you to the point where you're at now? Yeah, um, it's been quite a journey really. Like like ever since I was a kid, um, I've always wanted to create a story of my own and, and get it out there. Um, I just wasn't sure if it would be a video game. Like I thought it might be a comic or an animation or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I like I followed um, like art and design like through college and and then I got a job as a graphic designer um, at Chilingo, who are part of Electronic Arts, and I was there for about five years uh, before I thought like oh well I'll go indie because um, going indie seemed like quite a big risk. Um, you know, I, I didn't really have any programming knowledge. Like I'd only really done HTML and CSS before. So like, it just, it felt like such a risk um, to kind of code the game myself. And <coughs> excuse me, like originally, um, I thought maybe I'd, I'd use a programmer to help me, but I never really found anyone um, to do it with. So, um, I kind of like self-taught um, in the last year, like I was working at Chilingo, kind of self-taught how to do a bit of Python and, and how to use RemPy, oh, cool. uh, which is the visual novel engine. Yeah. And um, I don't know, like working as an indie, it kind of it kind of fits me because I kind of picked up programming quite well. Um, like my brother's a programmer, so he's helped me out a bit. Oh, and cool. um, I don't know, I've always been kind of good at doing too many things and, and not really focusing on like one particular thing. Like it certainly suits me much more than like AAA does, Yeah, uh, I think. Yeah. Cool. Uh, just out of curiosity, while you were at Chillingo, what projects did you work on? Um, oh gosh, I worked on so many like... Um, like, because I, I was there for five years and, and the first few years they, they published like it was like one or two games a week so wow <laughs> it's like hundreds of titles um i worked on a little bit on angry birds and cut the rope oh yeah um yeah like it was mainly like uh screenshots um they had this in-game kind of social network at the time this is before like apple had uh, the game center and and things like that. Yeah. Um. So I I kind of skinned that to make it match the game. Um. And there was there was also like Contra Jour and E. T. There was a like a freemium game of that. Um. A few years ago. Um. Iron Force. Uh. Which is like a popular kind of tank game. Um. Parking Mania. Uh. A, a heat a heat man game as well. Like. Oh, there's just. There's, there's just loads. So many. Wow, no, yeah, it sounds really cool. It just cool. keeps going. <laughs> yeah, a big list of really interesting stuff. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Cool. So, is is indie developing now your sort of like full time day job, or what do you? How do you work out what? How do you organize your time? I suppose between indie deving and other stuff. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it is my full time thing because um, you know, being at Electronic Arts, it's like you can't really make games on the side. So yeah. Um, I, I I quit to kind of focus on it, and I think like for me that that works best because I've tried to do projects like on the side in the past, and I, I never really get enough time to spend on them. So um, it's really good to like develop full time. I've been doing it now for just nearly two years. I started in January two thousand fifteen. Oh, cool. Um, and I, yeah, I really enjoy it. It's it's really good. Awesome. Um, no, that's really cool. Uh, so, um, talk a bit about your, more about your background. What sort of what games did you play when you were younger that sort of have, have influenced sort of your indie dev styles mm. or person in general? Um, oh, that's a it's a good question. Like, 
there's so so many games. Like I remember, I think like the first game I ever played was was Lemmings, I think, um, on like the Amiga. Oh right, cool. And um, yeah, like it's it's a bit like Tetris for me. Like you can still kind of go back to it. Yeah, and, yeah. And you still like. I don't know. It's just perfect. Like even the music and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know what you mean. I um, I started playing Lemmings Touch on my Vita uh, a couple okay. of days ago, and I, it's sort of like it feels. It's like it's it's the same sort of game, but it don't, it don't feel like it has like this the heart of like the original Lemmings. It doesn't. It yeah. you know you're doing the similar things. It just doesn't feel the same. I think it's yeah. maybe like the, the sort of like more pop artiness of it. There's something was something about classic Lemmings that was. It was just sort of timelessly done. It, yeah. But yeah, Lemmings is, is a good game. I, I I think I tried, like, not not that one, but a newer Lemmings, mm. like, years ago. And it just, it doesn't feel the same when they're not little pixel no. sprites. I don't know why. I, I just, I'm a bit of a retro gamer at heart, I think. <laughs> but yeah, like, I, I think that was the first time I was really engrossed in a game and I couldn't really like get off them yeah um i must have been about like five or three well maybe four even i i can't really remember um but yeah um god there's so many so many games uh <laughs> that have inspired me like every, every, even last night i was playing um final fantasy 15 um i don't want to spoil any anything because it's a bit further in the game but something happens uh to one of the characters and um it just really hit me like in the feels like I, you know i didn't expect much from final fantasy 15 but it's just i don't know like it's it surprised me really and and it's nice to you know still get surprised in in video games i think yeah no, i know what you mean it sometimes they kind of feel a bit too safe don't they they don't always have those sort of yeah big twists yeah. that you don't see coming at all or yeah, really and go for the nice, emotions. It's nice to see it in sort of a triple A game, like them taking a little bit of a risk or, or doing something a bit new or different and and innovating. Because I feel like now you you only really see it in in a lot of indie games and yeah, and less so triple A. So it it was really cool to see. I think. Cool, cool. Um, so apart from gaming, what do you do in your sort of spare time? What sort of things do you get up to? Um, okay, so for, <laughs> for me, it is, it is mainly gaming, like, I'm, I'm quite <laughs> a, a big geek. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I, I watch um, a lot of, of anime, mm. um, uh, and I draw, I still draw a lot. Yeah. Um, maybe not as much as I used to when I was younger, but, um, yeah, um, I also like uh, traveling. And um, going to Japan is, uh, I've been there three times and I, I just love it to bits. Like, I'm already trying to plan my next trip over there. Yeah. <laughs> my next excuse to. Uh, I've never been. I always mean to. Oh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Like, um, I mean, especially if you like anime and Japanese games, mm. like, they're just everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really, like, ingrained in the culture and. And there's lots of other things I like as well, like um, sort of the shrines and uh, the temples and the countryside and and just the sort of Japanese people's like hospitality and it's it's very friendly, lovely place. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, um, and and yeah, I guess like reading manga as well, like <laughs> anything like that, I, I I love it. Cool, cool. I'm mean, interested before what what brought you to Germany in the first place because you're originally from. UK, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, was it um, with to work with EA? Is that where you moved to Germany, or was there something else? No. Um, so my boyfriend um, works here. Oh right. Um, okay. Well, he got a job here, and um, he works at Nintendo now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, I just made that kind of committed uh, leap, <laughs> and uh, I always kind of fancied um, moving abroad and seeing what it's like in another sort of culture and everything so yeah no, that's that's cool that's really interesting yeah the, um yeah we thought about <laughs> moving to 
especially after the year we've, the UK just had, <laughs> we'll yeah. be doing different countries. So uh, <laughs> it's nice to know it's nicer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I have to ad- admit, since everything that's kind of happened, it's like I'm kind of glad I'm not in the UK. Yeah. Well. <laughs> 2016. Uh, good grief. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not been good. No. I mean, we I visited just last week actually, um, just kind of before Christmas. And um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it just seems like a strange kind of country now. It feels quite divided when I go back. Mm. It's it's quite sad. It is a bit, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> on to more upbeat topics. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I was uh, browsing your site uh, before and the the name Kinmoku come, came up yeah. and I didn't quite know where it going to where it sort of came from or what it meant or mm. anything. And I pronounced it right as well. Yeah, yeah. Hey, good. <laughs> um so yeah, it it's another geeky god, I'm gonna look like such a geek. <laughs> it's uh, the name of a planet in Sailor Moon, which is a anime and manga that I loved from like my teenage years. Um, and it's where it's the planet where the Sailor Starlights come from, which are some of my favorite characters. Okay. Um, cool. So yeah, I mean it's it's just a it's just a name that kind of stuck. Yeah. Uh, and I when I got into World of Warcraft, um, like you know how it is, like loads of names are taken, and and you don't really want a name that's got a load of numbers after it. Yeah. So. You mean. And like I keep going through everything, and and Kimoku was always a name that was available on like any server. So I'm yeah. Like, oh, that's great. So I'll go with that, and it just kind of stuck. And yeah. like I had it for my um, Shadow Priest, which is quite a a good name because it, it literally translates to like uh, Kin means gold. Mm. And Moku means uh, fog or smoke in Japanese, um, which kind of it, it fit a shadow priest pretty well, I thought. No, it does. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> a, a, geeky, a geeky thing. Uh, um, it's fine. It's it's nice but, when you get like a name like that that you can just use everywhere that no yeah, one else has yeah. taken. Yeah. Um, almost, almost everywhere. I think it was taken on Steam. Oh, and Twitter as well. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I do have Close. to put a number after it. <laughs> Uh, the 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 name I use for most things is uh, Neo Dominium, and okay. it came from A level chemistry where my chemistry teacher was really struggling to say Neo Diamond, which is the use in some light bulbs and stuff. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, it came from that. And it was about I think it was about like five. The whole lesson he'd say it differently, and he kept calling it Neo Dominium, and uh, continuously and. <laughs> For like the entire thing, and then there'd just be the entire year, just be, just be references to him having oh. massive speech impediment <laughs> about that one <laughs> word. Um, so yeah, but I've been quite lucky that that sort of stuck, and I've never found anywhere that's not already had it. And if it, that's, somewhere that's already does have it, I'm always like, oh, I must have an account here already. Yeah, <laughs> I've just yeah, it must forgotten. Be me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's quite handy. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> um. Moving on to your game, One Night Stand, uh, which yes. for people who don't know, do you want to give them a brief outline of it? Yeah, so um, it's a game where you play as a guy and you wake up and you're hungover and you don't remember anything from the night before. Uh, and then you wake up and you realise, this isn't my bed, this isn't my room, whoa, who is this sleeping next to me? Who is this strange lady? And it's about kind of looking around and trying to find clues as to how you got there and who she is and and that's that's kind of it <laughs> yeah no it's um it's a i think it found it, i found it a really interesting sort of take on lots of social experiences that you maybe not necessarily have on a one night stand but just have in awkward situations of like don't really know what to do so you kind of muddle through a bit um, yeah exactly which I, I I thoroughly enjoyed it, and um, one of the things I really wanted to ask you was kind of where the inspiration behind a lot of that came from, because I never really played anything that I play games that tackle sort of sort of social aspects, but never mm. quite so directly and quite on key, because there, there were a lot of moments where <laughs> I decided the option would be something that I a, either have done 
and it's gone horribly <laughs> wrong because I've done that. <laughs> or or be in retrospect gone. Yeah, I should have done that. That would have that would have not been rubbish. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah, I uh, just yeah. wondered. Um, yeah, it's it's funny. So it it started off as just a small idea, really. Like I was planning on doing um, Nana Reno Game Jam, which is the visual novel Game Jam in March, mm. and because I'd missed it the year before, and I was really good. So. Coming up to March, I was trying to think of, of game ideas, and I was having quite a few, like almost one a day. And I was going into town like on a Saturday, and there was a guy sat opposite me on the tram, and he just looked really like hungover and feeling sorry for himself. And it just got me wondering, like, I wonder what that guy's story is. Yeah. And and you know, for some reason, jumped straight to oh, he must have had a one night stand. <laughs> <laughs> and um I, but i don't know like he could have it could have been a bad experience you know he could have been like really upset or maybe he had a great time i i'm not sure but it made me think like oh there's loads of like possibilities here and you know there's, there's a lot of emotion involved so i thought like well i don't think i've seen that being done before so maybe i'll i'll run with that and um, yeah, it just seemed like a very interesting subject and, um, you know, quite socially awkward, which uh, is something I feel I relate to quite a lot sometimes. Uh, but it's also like a bit of a taboo topic as well. And, you know, not many people talk about it. So, you know, why not talk about it? Why not make a game about it? Yeah, no, absolutely. That was one of the things that really stood out to me as well. It's like, this is often a topic that's sort of brushed under the rug sort of like uh yeah. people don't feel sort of frowned upon in sort of in, in inverted commas here like polite conversation yeah exactly um, so and it, but it's still a, a conversation to be had i think yeah so. exactly so um do you think that sort of people who've played one night stand and sort of experienced it this might make them more open about those sort of things in the future so yeah i um i think so like I've had um, a few people say that to me, um, like already on Steam there's, uh, you know, comments and discussions about this kind of thing, you know, it's opening up a, a dialogue at least. Um, but yeah, there was this like one particular guy who had a, he said he had a really bad one night stand experience just once in his life and he said that he didn't really want to play the game but he felt intrigued so he got it and he said it really helped him like it really like you know see the whole experience that he had in a different light you know he felt less guilty and ashamed about it and it just it felt really good to like get an email like that yeah um, you know I, I think like if only it was a bit more open maybe he wouldn't have felt so bad about it all this time you know yeah, no, that's really nice. That is yeah. because um, people who don't know that One Night Stand has twelve endings. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so twelve different endings that and they are very different. Um, so you, this one's where you can end up being kicked out naked <laughs> or like end up being <laughs> yeah. friends. So um, they're, they're kicking. They really vary. Um, what which which ending felt like the most sort of I don't know natural or easiest one to put in? Um... If that makes sense. Yeah, um, to be honest, apart from the silly ones, most of them. Right. Um, so, like, kind of the friend endings, and even the one where she kicks you out because you've kind of, um, you know, you've taken a photo or you've done something yeah. that she's upset about. Like, you know, that all feels very natural. It's like, you know, um, as I'm writing it, um, it's like, well, how would I feel if someone had done that to me? I'd be. You know, you try and be polite up to a certain point, and then you'd be like, "No, just get out." Like, I've, I've had enough. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I've had enough trying to be nice. I'm not well, and you know, so it, it always um, felt quite natural. Like, I think that's why there's so many endings because I, I kept like getting ideas. Um, but yeah, there are like a couple in there that are, are less like that. Like, um, sort of the uh, if you steal her underwear or. Um, if you keep like trying to escape the room with no clothes on, he'll eventually run out the door naked. Um, you know that's that's a little 
they're, they're a bit silly. I, I, I don't really see that happening, but it's nice to have a bit of comic relief with these yeah. things, I think. No, absolutely. No, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but so which ending of all of them is kind of your, your favourite ending? Which one did you take like, all the comic ones into consideration as well? Which one is just like yeah. your favourite? It's... I, I do actually so there's there's probably like three like generally I like the happy endings mm. like the um, the her song ending which is the last one uh, which I don't want to spoil in case anyone's not got it yet um, and the true friend ending yeah. where she kind of opens up honestly um, to you uh, again don't want to spoil it uh, but yeah like I actually think maybe it's the one where you steal her underwear because it i mean i even made it and it makes me laugh i don't know if that makes me look really silly <laughs> or what but it just it just seems so ludicrous yeah like who who would who would act like this <laughs> yeah no i think that's probably my favorite ending as well yeah. i wasn't expecting that to be a thing that i would be able to do <laughs> yeah. and it let me and i was like Let's just see where this plot thread goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's really silly, but yeah, I like it. <laughs> no, that's really cool. Um, yeah, uh, there's been like quite a large uptick in the number of visual novel esque games coming out recently. Where do you mm. see the genre going in the future? Um, so. Yeah, like I'm not, I'm not so sure. Like I have a few ideas. Like, I mean, I'd love to see more animation, but I'm kind of biased like that. I love animation. Um, and and on that note, like I don't know if you've heard of Live Two D. Um, uh, haven't but it's, actually. Uh, sorry, you have. Or? I haven't. No. Oh, I haven't. Okay, so it's um, it's where like the sprites are made. Um, as vectors so uh, you kind of have like a face that's like layered up so the eyes would be separate and the mouth would be separate and so on yeah and and then live cd kind of brings them all into a 3d space so it creates this kind of weird 2d 3d animation but it actually looks really really effective and i've seen quite a few visual novels kind of taking that up cool. um Unfortunately, Rempai doesn't support it, but I think Unity does. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, that that's going to get more popular, I think. Um, I think, I mean, maybe VR? Like, I could see it happening maybe in Japan at some point, like yeah. a VR kind of visual novel game, um, but probably not in the West for a while. Mm. Um but, I mean, one thing I have noticed is, like, narrative of visual novels is getting way more diverse. Um, you know, it used to start off as kind of uh, Atome or, or hentai games, like, you know, very Japanese. Um, and you, you still get those, but yeah. you're starting to see, like, way more experimental stuff, like, especially if you sort of browse games on, on Itch.io, like... There's, there's like topics uh, covered, you know, about mental health or, or fantasy, uh, you know, even horror visual novels with without visuals in them. <laughs> yeah. There's like there's loads of, of like topics coming up, and it's it's really nice to see. Like I hope the genre keeps expanding like that. Yeah. No. Same. Because um, I think that the the visual novel genre is quite similar to, and I hate this name, but. Um, walking simulators are sort of a different yeah. way of experiencing it. So what you said about mm. VR could be quite interesting because a lot of those are first person anyway. So yeah, like if you walked around a world and, and spoke to people and unraveled the story like that, might be really quite cool. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of VR, is it a <laughs> VR version of One Night Stand on the cards, or is that a <laughs> uh... <laughs> probably not? <laughs> Right. Um, because it would mean I'd have to build the game quite differently. Like it'll have to be in three D, and that means a different engine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I imagine that would be really immersive. Like, if uh, you know, if VR really, really takes off, then I might be tempted to do like a one night stand sequel in VR. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, but it's it's kind of I 
I think, you know, VR is really cool and I've tried it, but I'm just not 100% sure it's a financial, like, it's financially a good idea. Yeah. Um, it's still you know, it, very expensive, so yeah. Yeah, it's it's expensive and I've, there's not really been that one game that everyone needs to, to play and... No. You know, it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of an oddball really like I, I'm kind of like laying low and watching what everyone else does on that <laughs> Fair. that sounds like a good plan to be honest make the other people uh, do the risks <laughs> cool <laughs> um, so uh, what are you working on at the moment I saw on your website that you've got another project on the go what is it yeah um, so originally uh, I was making um a game, a visual novel called Love IRL, which is the working title, so it's not final, um, which is inspired by kind of my time in World of Warcraft. Um, but it's such a big project. Like, I've been working on it for like a year and a half and before I started One Night Stand, and then One Night Stand kind of like took <laughs> off and and I've kind of like had it on the back burner since. Yeah. And I've had other game ideas since, like as you do. Um, I just, I, I don't know, because this other game is such a, it's such a big project. I kind of want another shorter game like One Night Stand to kind of, it's, it's more of a financial decision, but, um, you know, an, another little game to release whilst I work on my bigger one. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like so, this shorter game is, um, it doesn't have a name yet, but it's going to be about, um a woman who kind of reflects on her life when she was younger. Um, I don't know if you've seen Studio Ghibli film Only Yesterday. I have, yes. Ah, okay. So a little bit inspired by that. Um, also inspired by, um, is it Beyond the game with Ellen Page in? I think so, yes. I haven't played yeah. that, but yeah, I, re I vaguely recall the box art and stuff. Yeah, so it's a little bit like that as well. Like, kind of um i mean she goes through a timeline of her life so it'll it'll be like that but it'll still be a visual novel okay. um and yeah it'd be quite a small idea and the art style will be completely different like it won't be rotoscoped um and there'll be like more music and stuff so um but it, it will be kind of similar to one night stand in the fact that she'll be looking um, at objects um, that she finds and kind of reminiscing about them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say too much because it's still early days. <laughs> okay, cool. Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, Love IRL, is it? Which uh, appears in One Night Stand, actually, if I remember yes. correctly. Yes, it does. So, yeah, I, I played a lot of uh, World of Warcraft when I was at university. And um, I met... Um, a few people on there, like good friends, and ended up um, in a relationship with a couple of them. And um, yeah, it's it's just like uh, kind of me reflecting on on that time, like how um, you know, because some people see gaming as this negative thing, and and really like it was it was a great positive in my life. And um, yeah, it Love IRL will actually be. Um, a more traditional visual novel like an Atome game so you get there's like different guys that you can kind of pick to go with mm. and there's a girl as well and you play as a girl um, and it just depends like who you chat to and who you find more interesting like who you'll end up meeting in real life yeah. Um, but yeah like it's a very big game because I want it to start from the girl playing the game for the first time and then meeting these people yeah. and then kind of getting to know them and then eventually she'll she'll see them in real life um but yeah it's <laughs> it's a very uh sort of big um demanding project and i think it might be something i'll kickstart and maybe get a bit of help with later down the line okay cool so kickstart is definitely something that you'd consider doing that in the future yeah i think so or like indiegogo or another sort of crowdfunder um it, i've seen it is very 
successful for a lot of visual novels. Um, yeah. It, because I'm doing it on my own as well, like, I I really want Love IRL to be, like, the best it can be. Like, it's, you know, I, th I think it'll be a really fun, enjoyable, happy game. And like One Night Stand, quite kind of realistic as well. Yeah. And... I I just I really want it to be the best it can be, and I think Kickstarter is a great way for an indie dev to do that because you can bring in some help, and I could get a composer or an editor or even a programmer to like help me make the game, and it just seems like the best solution for that. But I'm not quite ready for uh, launching a, a big Kickstarter campaign yet. I don't think it's um, it's quite a big commitment. Um, you know, not letting people down, and you really need to know what you're doing to deliver. I think. Yeah, I know what you mean. You don't want to have uh, for the project to stumble because of a few things that you hadn't thought of. So it's worth taking your time, considering every yeah. angle. Would yeah, you... I think so. Yeah, it's it's a lot of time as well because you know you've got the video to do and and promotion and you know it's a it's a constant thing. And when it when it's just you like on your own it's you know it's going to be like a full-time thing just running the campaign so yeah um, yeah yeah I, I need to be a bit more i need to think about it a bit longer i think cool cool um would you consider doing like a, a patreon like uh kitty horror show have has one for yeah like, that sort of thing i i i mean i thought about it. like i created an account with the intent to like to do it but i don't know like Again, I I like to. Uh, it's a bit like um, with Kickstarter. I like to not have so much pressure or commitment on me. Like yeah, I can um, get that. It, it's for me to be creative. It I, I really need to feel quite free. Yeah, you um, want lots of do. deadlines put in place. That yeah, and with Patreon, I I know like um, some people will do like something every month, and I think it works for if you do videos or. Or like shorter things for a game that takes so long. I don't know. It you can do it like uh, donations per project, but again, like if a if a game takes six months to a year, like and you you're kind of unknown. I I don't know if anyone would really bother with it. I don't know. Again, it's like is it going to be more hassle than it's worth? <laughs> so. I don't know. You might see a Patreon from me in future, but probably more likely going to be a Kickstarter campaign or something like that. Cool. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. When that, yeah. when, that, <laughs> when, that when that pops up, it'll be interesting to see. Cool. Uh, the, uh, if I have anything else I wanted to ask you, actually. Um... Uh, I have a note here um, about other ideas I had during the game jam. Oh yes, yes. Do you, yeah. What other like sort of rejected ideas did you have? Because I, I always find that's quite interesting. To see what people. Yeah. I the thing is, I I wish I wrote them down because I I only remember one of them now. But I mean, I think it sounds like quite a good idea, but it, I never fully fleshed it out, which is kind of why I didn't pick it. Um. But yeah, it was this idea of you're a bartender, um, in. You know, behind the bar mm. and these three different characters come in and you keep chatting to them and uh, the idea was one of them might be like a policeman or something and one of them might be someone who committed a crime yeah. and the other one might be a witness to that crime uh, but you'll hear the story from different from, from these different perspectives and you'll kind of like decide who to kind of side with on it um, I'd never really fleshed out what the crime might be, but uh, again, this is kind of <laughs> kind of why I didn't pick it because it's like oh, it's not a very solid concept. But I wanted to rotoscope uh, the three characters, kind of like one night stand, so you could tell like if they were lying or if they were being like really truthful, mm. and kind of playing with um, you know why they've done what they have. Um, I mean, I haven't actually played her story yet, but I imagine it's what what I think that game is about. Yeah. Because um, I've seen like that's like um, 
footage of her kind of being interrogated and it's kind of like like that but you'd be hearing it um like in a bar and maybe like the guy that's done the crime would be like hmm, you know should i turn myself in or you know sh should i not or maybe the policeman doesn't really care yeah so it was it did seem like quite a hard story to tell but i think it might have been quite quite interesting but with it being a month-long game jam um you know having like three characters to rotoscope and a story that wasn't quite you know finished and you know even the costumes that the people would have to wear it just it just didn't seem as feasible as as one night stand so i didn't go with it but it's still like an idea that if i do fully flesh out it's like oh that might be that might be pretty cool at some point <laughs> it does sound interesting that sounds i'd, I'd, yeah. I'd play that definitely that sounds really yeah. interesting and different so. i have i it's for me like it's the story's not final but i can picture how it would look in my mind so it would be kind of like a black and white kind of style um investigation -y kind of kind of thing but, yeah yeah cool maybe one day <laughs> yeah oh that i'm definitely keeping up that that sounds really interesting cool <laughs> um yeah and your other other mini project that's yeah. not fully formed yeah no. sounds really cool as well <laughs> I'm keeping it that one close to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> have you got anything else you'd like to say or talk about? Or I, um, I don't have any other questions. I don't think so. Okay. Um, no, I don't think so. I just uh, thank you for for playing One Night Stand and and enjoying it. I guess and reaching out. No, yeah, that's fine. It, it was great. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And, um, thank you for making cool. it. It was good. <laughs> no problem. Um, do you have like a Twitter or anything people can find you on, on your website name and stuff? Yeah, so on Twitter, uh, which is what I use the most, you can find me at kinmoku87. Uh, my website is lucyblundell.com and that has links to One Night Stand where you can download it and uh, also has my blog and uh, upcoming projects on it. Awesome. Cool. Um, cool. Thank you for joining me. And I said it was me, Lucy. Um, <laughs> been been really interesting. And um, yeah, good luck with all the other games in the future. And, um, thank you. We hope to hear from you in the future about things that are happening. So yeah, awesome. Uh, cool. I'm, I'm losing all my words. <laughs> I'm getting excited now. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much for coming on this interviewee podcasty thing. Um, no problem. It's been great. And uh, bye. Yeah. See you.